I'm John Buchanan. Now, one of my favourite books about music is Brian Eno's Diary. Um, I think it's still in publication, but if not, go and find it it's somewhere in secondhand. The book is called A Year with Swollen Appendices, which sounds dreadful, but really what it is is a diary of, I think, 1996, a year in Brian Eno's life. Um, and at the end of the book, there are a whole series of appendices, separate things, chapters, ideas, stories that he's written, but also accounts of particular things or ideas that he's had. And one of those is an interesting story about working with the engineer Daniel Lenoir, with whom he made lots of records for you too. And what he talks about working with Daniel is, if I may call him that, feels a bit familiar, is this idea that the reason why he was such a great engineer was that every morning what he would do would be to create an extraordinary array of sonic fun in the studio long before the band would arrive. So if I've understood this correctly, what he would do would be to set up Edge's guitars, multiple guitars through multiple different effect solutions. He'd set up different microphones for Bono. He would set up both real drums and electronic drums for Larry Mullen Jr. to play. And what would happen is the band would arrive and they'd experiment with all these little noises that had been made for them, for them to see whether or not there was an idea somewhere in someone's setup which maybe prompted the idea for music making. And of course, we know and love that idea too. Every time you buy a new plugin, maybe it has a preset which prompts a little bit of something different to the way that you might normally work. That idea that somehow sonic fodder can come from somewhere that just provides you with a fresh take on your music. And it got me thinking that maybe an interesting thing to do would be to make a template within Logic which is designed entirely to mess around with ideas rather than to generate them in the first place. Normally when we make templates what we want to do is to have a nice structured organized collection of sounds which we know are going to do a particular thing, sounds that we rely on all of the time, and that's absolutely great. But what if a template could provide unpredictability? I like that idea. So what I've done is I've prepared some audio stems from a live loop session, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these stems into my template, which I have prepared to do totally unpredictable things, and we're going to just see what happens. I have no idea what's going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Logic, you probably don't believe me, but I promise you I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to open up Logic and what I'm going to do is to come to New From Template. And what that does is to actually open up, well, any one of these pages. Here's the live loop session, which was the one that was looking at me. But what I've done is to make a new template, which therefore is going to exist within my templates. And I've just called it Ideas Machine 1, suggesting there might be more Ideas Machines in the future. What I'm then going to do is to hit choose. Now what this is going to do is to open up a pretty discreet looking collection of things. These are all audio tracks and what I have done is to prepare on all of them a different collection of plugins. And what I've also done is to set up a bunch of auxiliaries waiting in the wings potentially for me to feed these sounds through to a collection of separate effects. But firstly what I need to do is to import my audio. And what I'm going to do is to actually do that onto new tracks at the bottom of this ideas machine. In other words what I'm going to do is to come to my finder, I'm going to come and find all four of these individual parts, I'm going to drag them into Logic and I'm going to dump them underneath these tracks. And what Logic's going to ask me um, is what I want to do with them, and I'm going to create new tracks for them. Here they all are. So if I press play, we're just going to hear the original audio. And as I say, this is all taken from a live loop session whose name I've temporarily forgotten. But it doesn't matter. I think you'll recognize it. Nice. Okay, so fun and funky little thing. Now, I don't really want any of this material to sound like this. What I almost want to imagine is that someone has asked me to make a crazy mad remix out of a really sort of predictable piece of music, and I'm drawn to that idea. So what do I mean when I talk about an ideas machine? Well, before I explain what I've done, I'm going to mute three of these regions, and what I'm going to do is to take the drums up to this first track, which I've called Drums One. Not the most inspiring name sounds like this.
So immediately what it's doing is giving us this halftime feel. Okay, it's not going to, you know, win any prizes for originality, but immediately what's happening is that we've got a completely different flavor for this beat loop. Now, how is it halftime? Well, what I've done is I've set up Beat Breaker, and I'm using the half time pattern, which literally takes the original playback speed and it halves it. So effectively, this is now happening over that particular um, period of time. But it's also fair to say that what I could potentially do immediately, having got this plugin doing something interesting, would be to extend the length of this. I might decide that immediately I wanted this idea to unfold over eight beats rather than four. So we get this kind of weird little skip in there, nothing too massively dramatic, but I suppose what I'm really doing is just showing you that straight away, even though I've prepared a bit of material here, we can begin to manipulate and warp it in some way. Okay, so that's a nice, easy little start. What might I do, for example, with the synths? Well, the synths are here. Um, in fact, actually, I think I've got two separate synth stems. These are the kind of magic synths. And I have prepared a track for these, but I don't really know what they're going to do. Okay, so here I've got two different plugins. Firstly, I've got a little fat effects plugin. In fact, it looks like this is just the kind of default patch. And all that's happening here at the moment that I can really see is that there is a sort of distortion unit, which is providing us with some bit crushing, some saturation, and a bit of vary drive as well. The compressor's on, the bass enhancer is on as well. So there's a bit of stuff happening, but I think because it's the default patch, I've also now got the opportunity to potentially use the XY pad to do some filtering stuff if I want. And actually, as a sort of static level, this has immediately changed the character of the sound to have this kind of in the middle as well. Okay, next thing I've got is a track which I've called Wonk Slip Around. Okay, well, what should we put on that? Let's try the bass, maybe. So all I'm doing is just sort of randomly assigning sounds to individual tracks. So here Beat Breaker is choosing different slices and applying different processing to each individual one. So effectively what we're doing is we're randomizing the pattern or just jumping in. Any slice that has a down slope is effectively going to reverse that individual piece. We've got um, opportunities where sounds are getting broken up into two slices or two separate pieces within one individual kind of slice, if you like, within Beat Breaker. All kinds of crazy stuff is happening. And as a result, this bass line doesn't really sound anything like it's original at all. I'm just interested to know what the drums and the magic synths and the bass line sound like together through their processors. <laughs> Okay, so we're stuck in this interesting place where even though we've now completely repurposed this audio, up to a point we get 
a sort of predictability that comes from the fact that we quite quickly get used to what these patterns are doing. But one thing that's so nice about having a template is the potential to duplicate the settings which are now being applied to one sound and make them available to another. So for example, this kind of wonky slip around thing that I've just allocated to the bass. In fact, let's lose a few colors here so we know what's what. That's gonna be the basses. This is gonna be the synths and we know that this is the drums is that I could duplicate this track. I could move it up here for the drums. And what I could then do would be to say, all right, well, what I'm going to do is to chop this pattern up a little bit, pretty much at random. And maybe what I'm going to do is just to allocate a few slices to the track underneath. So the setting that's being used on the bass is now going to be used for those slices in the drums. Well, immediately that's just going to provide something again that's new and unpredictable. I don't really know what that's going to sound like. Might be great, might be a disaster, who knows? Okay, what I'm also going to do is to uh, make use of this other track that I've made, which again is a different ba uh, beat breaker pattern feeding a bit crusher. And it looks like that's being sent to an auxiliary. Okay. Okay, which is being sent to pedal board and that's got some delay on it which looks like it's reversed well that's right up my street let's see what that sounds like this is the original Okay, so again, we've got this crazy pattern. And the reason why it's double speed is because the length of it is two beats rather than four. So effectively it's squeezing everything that would happen into four beats into two, so therefore it's double speed. And again, of course, this would be an amazing track to duplicate to potentially also allocate to something else. Maybe the beats, again, maybe the magic synths. The interesting thing about this, in fact, would be, what if we set this up as a parallel channel? So what I've got is a duplicate of that. I'm going to call this magic synths times two. I'm going to put this here, and now we could run both these channels at the same time. I really like that. So we've now got two lots of the same sound being treated in totally different ways. And that's producing this kind of weird little answering phrase for the first one. I've also got to find out what happens if we put the beat loop through that. So again, I'm going to duplicate it. Something tells me we're not going to need the reverb for the drums. I'm not going to need the tremolo either. I might even take the bit crusher off it too. So effectively, again, what I've just done is to duplicate that setting. We could bring the original drum part down here and we could extend it out for its entire length. So this just plays constantly. Sounds like this. Hold on to your hats.
It's so much fun. So what we've effectively got here from a relatively straightforward template start, heavily reliant on Beatbreaker, or Bitbreaker, as I've just called it, is this kind of weird little opportunity to throw some sounds into a kind of tumble dryer and to see what sticks. And the great thing is that once you've created one channel of messing around, some stuff that's going to be a real interrupter for that signal, if you like the idea of then being potentially able to apply that to a different sound, well fine, just duplicate it, take it up to that track and you can begin to see that I'm then doing some separate things. So for example, the magic synths part which I've comp uh, sort of duplicated and taken up for the drums, I've added some auto filtering to to make that a much more mid-range bass little industrial sequence that's providing some syncopation to play off against the half-time rhythm up at the top. It doesn't take much imagination to say, okay, well that seems like an interesting sound, I'm going to take that somewhere else. And yes, the output's overloading, but of course that's really easily dealt with. So if you like this idea of being able to take some pre-existing material and to just see what happens when you put it into an ideas sort of factory like this template that we've built, then effectively what we've got a chance to do is to just see what sticks. And if all I get out of this is one little sound that makes me think, oh yeah, I could build a track around that, well, it's done its job. And if it turns out that there's more than that, there's a whole track to be made here out of little bits and pieces, well, so much better. So an interesting way of just being able to think about kickstarting ideas from a new starting point. Templates, they can do all kinds of interesting things.